patient and identifying donors in the lab that, that have the right haplotype and identify which LE the MHC plus 2 molecule is used. And then you, what you then do is to try to block the response by the antibodies against these different um, HLA molecules or MHC molecules. So in these patients, this is the medium control and this is the MAP response. And uh, this clone was blocked by, by adding anti-DQ. So this response was, was um, DQ6 restrictive. And we did this for all the clones. And 25 of the 28 clones, we could confirm that this would be an MHC plus 2 presented antigens. In the last three clones, we don't really know what's going on, but we have a feeling that it might be recognition of liquid antigens in the context of uh, CD1. But I won't show any data because this is very preliminary. Done. We obviously want to know, do these T-cell clones produce cytokines, inflammatory cytokines? And the short answer is yes, they do. They produce interferon gamma, they produce IL-17, and they don't produce the TH2 cytokines, IL-4. And I think this is what we, you expect if you have T-cell reactive microbacteria. <coughs> T-cell clones that react to microbacteria. They are very likely to produce these cytokines. Although most of the clones, they produced both cytokines, there was a very clear distinction. They either produced a lot of IL-17, a little interferon gamma, or they did it the other way around. Oh. Sorry. And as you might remember, we had uh, one patient that showed a very mixed response. It responded both to E. coli and it showed also a very strong response to MAP. And for this patient, I already had 17 clones that responded to MAP. And we decided to try to make T cell clones respond to E. coli as well from this patient. And also from the other patient that had a strong E. coli response. But we only managed to get eight clones from this patient that had this mixed reaction. And we wanted to test to see if these. Uh, if these clones have the same uh, cytokine pattern. And they sort of do, but as you can see, the response to MAP is much stronger than the response to E. coli. It produces a lot more cytokines. This is, I think this is very interesting, and there's something you can follow up on, but I think it's really too early to conclude when you make T cell clones just from one patient. Theoretically, these can be sister clones. They can be the same, just multiplied in the, the samples. But I think it really is interesting. What we're doing now is uh, also a very challenging task. We want to find out what these clones respond to. And as, as you know, there are even more predicted orbs at the moment than growing. So what we first did was to, we got some uh, antigens from John Banerjee and also Klaus Ogo from the Serum Institute. And we tested all the clones online to see if they responded to these antigens. <coughs> And so far, we just identified the specificity of one T cell clone, and it's, it's responded to MAP1508, which is an ESET like protein, ESET family protein. And as you know, these are very strong T cell antigens, so this is not very surprising. But we do show in this figure is really the, the mapping of the epitope to find which amino acid sequence do this uh, clone respond to. And what you do is you make synthetic overlapping peptide from the whole protein. These are 20 mers with 10 amino acids overlap, and you identify the response. And then you make new peptides with only one amino acid overlapping, and you can pinpoint the epitope to be located in this sequence. And I think this is when you do the epitope mapping on T cells, this is really where immunology becomes a bit more black and white. This is really what this clone responded to. To find the specificity of the other clone is uh, very challenging, and we're trying, not trying to do a library approach to screen on a lambda expression library to try to find the specificity of these other clones. So to conclude, we do have MAP-reactive T cells present in CD patients in higher frequencies than the controls, and they do produce inflammatory cytokines, <coughs> IL-17 and or interferon gamma. And I think it's fair to say hard to conclude that these MAP-reactive T cells they are likely to contribute to the mediated pathology in CD. You can't really say if they set the process off, then I think you really need the early state children, uh, pediatric patients, but I don't know if you can get biopsies from them. 
And this work is just recently been uh, published in uh, PLOS ONE, so, and that's free, freely accessible online. And I would really like to end up by acknowledging all the co-workers on this paper, and then particularly the people at the Oslo University Hospital. Knut Lodin is the gastroenterologist, and you really need a dedicated gastroenterologist that also knows and understands immunology in this work. Ludwig Sully, he runs a really good immunology group working with C-elect disease and T-cells in Oslo. And the methodology that they have developed for, for C-elect disease has been uh, crucial for this project, I think. So thank you for your attention, and we're happy to take any questions. Uh, questions, please? We didn't make T cell clones from uh, we didn't make T cell clones from the control patients because it's very tedious. So the controls are really done on the level of T cell lines. You could always make we have a lot of clones, but it's, it's really a lot of work. So we can you can amplify clones that we don't know the specificity of, but then it's really hard to test the cytokine profile without using mycogens, which is sort of artificial. But the, the difference between the groups is really on the level of T cell lines. And we didn't look at the cytokine profiles of the T-cell lines. Uh, it, oh, yes, yeah. sorry. Any, yeah. other, any other questions? John in the back, raise your hand if you can't hear at all what the question is. I'll try to repeat it. I think that was quite clear, but if other people can't hear it, just let me know. Okay, the question was oh, uh, whether you've done any uh, studies on the markers on the cell, whether they're all CD4 or the gamma delta or other. Is that the question? Yeah. They are all CD4 cells, even the ones that we couldn't block that we think might be CD1 restricted. They all are CD4 positive T alpha beta T cells. And they express CCR6, which is sort of a marker by all 17 cells. Okay, Vivek and then Robert. What E. coli serotype do you use as your stimulating uh, antigen? What E. coli serotype do you use as your stimulating antigen? Uh, I must be honest with you, I don't remember. But it's an invasive strain that we made, sort of because of the entry invasive to be made in preparation from, but I don't remember the serotype, I'm sorry. You showed a differential response of either inclusion 17 or either. Mm. Was there a clinical correlation with the difference in Crohn's disease depending upon what the response was? So the question was whether there was a difference in the clinical course of the, the patient or whether they had a gamma or an IL-17 uh, scenario in that uh, scatter plot. I think the groups are really too small to conclude. It's only four patients that I got the clones from. So uh, it's really hard, and we haven't yet been going to do the not to IRGM, the typing work, but we haven't done it. The only thing that we haven't noticed so far, sort of, but we didn't put it in the paper, or maybe, maybe mentioned it in the paper, is that we had three times with this patient out of the 11 that didn't show any response to MAP at all in any of the assays. And they all had colon disease, they didn't have any involvement of small bowel. But that's sort of the only relation to clinical designs that might be relevant. But it's two, two, two small groups, really. Okay, there's time for one more question, otherwise we're a little bit uh, early, and then we can move on to the next question, the next presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew.